Luke chapter 1, verse number 50. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Okay, now, this is Mary speaking. Mary is a woman that was chosen by God. She's no ordinary woman, but yet she's ordinary. She's, she's a normal woman, not to be raised up on a pedestal, but she's also special that God has chosen her as a vessel. So she's clean. She obeys the law. We've seen it. We're going to see it more. So, her words, as we look at what she's talking to Elizabeth. Zachariah is there in a the corner who can't say a word. Forgot about him. See, he didn't believe Mary is talking because she believed. Get that. He can't say nothing. So let's turn to Proverbs 3.33. Chapter 3, verse 33. Of what Mary had to say. You know, Mary was there all the way to the death of her son. With John. There's three people that, that you want to speak and, and know in the Bible. Jesus. Mary and John. Proverbs 3.33 The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he that blesses the habitation of the just. There is no reward to the wicked. There is a blessing there is the happiness. We've looked at that. When Leah names one of her boys, she said, Blessed, they shall call me happy, because I'm blessed. Happy is those who are just. Now, mercy, Job 11, 6. Job 11, verse 6. When we look at mercy, Bless is happy. Mercy is to treat an offender better than he deserves. Job 11 says, I deserve hell. And I'm not going to get it. Why? Because I'm good? No, absolutely not. Because I'm of American? Definitely not. I'm an offender that is getting better than what I deserve based upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Job 11.6 And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to them to that they are doubled to that which is. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. You know, even if you have rejected Jesus Christ as your Savior, and based upon with Proverbs 3. And mercy, the definition in Job 11, 6, you know God says, I give it rain upon the just and the unjust. You don't deserve rain. When you, when you rejected the creator, when you talk evolution, why should God give you his blessings when you believe nothing gave it to you? And Job says, well, so far, in the book of Job, if God puts you in a hospital bed for your, your entire life, that is still not more what you deserve. God is of great mercy. 
And before we say we keep the law, our first waking moment, even before we open our eyeballs, should be to God. And thanking God for a good night, even though we, we may have been awake all night. Teaching your children, your grandchildren to do righteousness, not just right. Go back to Luke chapter 1. She says in verse 50, And his mercy is on them that fear them from generation to generation. Teaching your children, your grandchildren to do righteous. And not just doing right. It's proper to treat people there are elder than you respect but but realize that God the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and good that God is watching you and when no one else is watching you God is watching you but to fear and obey God grows or should grow in a family tree it is not the pastor's job, it is not the Sunday school teacher's job to raise your children in God. Mom, Dad, it is your job. It is your job, man, to take the authority in your house and the word and to train your house. Your pastor only gets you three days a week. Three hours. And compared to a minimum of 60 hours of the television. You're not going to have a godly family. You're not going to have a righteous family. And we know that when God placed Mary in charge of his son, the raise, we know that God knew that Mary would do the job. And do it righteously, not just right. See, there's a big difference between right and righteous. When God is speaking, he's talking to, talking to the angels before he goes to the Psalm, uh, a Sodom, he says about Abraham, we uh, something like, I know he will bring his children up. Something like that. I forget exact words. I know Abraham will do right by his children. That is the testimony. And when your family has failed, don't go running to the church. Run to the head of the household. The man. Then the mother. Because the children only follow in the leadership that is in the house. Mary says, His mercy is on them that fear Him, God, from generation to generation. And you got to realize, when you steal something and you lie, your parents may not know, but God knows, and you need to fear. God is seeing you. And you will stand before him one day, and you will give an account. That's why God tells you to bring out the rod and put it on their little behind. Before I do this crime, I may get caught. And even if I don't get caught, God is seeing me do it, and that is the fear of God. If Dad doesn't get a hold of me first.
And when you can get that down in a family, you got success. And no family has success because no child is perfect. Fear the Lord we're going to look at tonight. 30 times. That's almost one for every day of the month. You want to know so funny? You want to know what is hilarious? You know what is comical? Look at Acts 9.31. I'm going to show you something really funny. You know I'm, I'm tongue and teeth. Acts 9.31. <clears throat> you know, that's our little mutt. Acts 9.31 says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. A revival, would you say? You want to know what's so funny? Churches, are, they got all this, like, revival, revival, revival. You want to know what's so funny? You got church growth in this verse, don't you? This is the only place in the New Testament the fear of the Lord shows up. 30 times. And the last day of the month, <laughs> if you want to put it like that, it's the only place in the New Testament in Acts chapter 9. And the growth came by having fear of God. You know why there's no growth? Because there's no fear of God. How do you know there's no fear of God? How many Christmas trees and tinfoil angels were having their little parades and their little parties and their little plays at the church on December 25th, 2014? And you were fearing God to realize that it's not Jesus. It is Tammuz that you would fear God that you are honoring another God. That you are lying to all the parents that came to hear the gospel. You are lying to them about Jesus and his birth. And you expect to get salvation out of that? You don't fear God, Pastor. Because you would not have the paganism. You would fear to bring the paganism into your church house if you feared God. That's why you have no growth. I would fear that Jesus Christ would have came in that moment if I had paganism in me and in my family. Have Jesus come as my wife and I are decorating a tree that Jeremiah says, You're not! Because of heathen. Oh! Standing before the judgment seat of Christ, as I say, and God calls it, hey, what are all these credit card bills, my friend? The borrower is, is servant to the lender. I mean, the, the, well, you know what it says in Proverbs. There's no fear. There's no fear of doing right. There's no fear of doing wrong. 1 Samuel 11.7. We'll look at some of these fear of God. 1 Samuel 11.7. 1 Samuel 11.7. Why is our nation Kapui? Kapapi. Kadongi. Gone. 1 Samuel 11.7. <coughs> First Samuel eleven seven. This is the first king of Israel. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces. Boy, he must have been strong. And sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of the messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel the prophet, 
so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. In the New Testament, it said they came out with one accord. Here's a nation that God worked, and they all feared from God. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people. Not the king, not taxation, not losing. <coughs> Excuse me. Fear of God. What is God going to do with us if we don't join with the prophet and the king? You know why there's no revival in America today? They talk about our leader that God has put in the White House. You think voting did. God did. And you violate what Paul and Peter says about the leaders. There's no fear of God. Psalms 19.9 the rest of these are in Psalms and Proverbs. So Psalms 19.9. I'm going to show you why there is no revival. And you won't get right, and you won't fear God, and you won't change. You won't repent. I know you won't. Because you like it. Psalms 19, verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Do you want to be clean? You fear God. Fearing God will keep you from doing certain sins in your life because you would fear that He'd catch you doing it, which He's already going to catch you doing it because He's already there with His eyes. And you still do it. And you don't care. You bring in those traditions after traditions after traditions. And you didn't mind what Jesus said about tradition. God's not in them. But you just cover them up so you can do them. And you expect God to bless something that God's not going to bless because it's sin. But God will bless it because you're doing it in a good nature kind of way. You want to be clean. You got to fear God. And it's forever. Your entire life as a Christian to be clean and do right to the day you die or are raptured. You fear God and you will be clean. That's what the verse says. But you want to keep toying. You want to keep doing wrong. Psalm 34.11 Relax. I love you guys. I'm just preaching. It's what the Bible says. I'm sick and tired of these, these, these panty waist preachers out there who don't preach the truth. 34 of 11. <coughs> Come ye children. Are you a child of God? Have you been in, are you going to be adopted? Are you in the process of being adopted by God through the Holy Spirit, by the finished work of Jesus Christ? Are you called a child, a son of God? Come ye children. You've been given the new birth? Come ye children. Hearken unto me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Where do you find that in pulpits today? Do you know what fearing God, according to what we just read, it needs to be taught. You don't take your child one day and say, Son, what's one plus one? Now, you got to sit down with one plus one is two. One plus two is three. One plus three is four. You have to teach children the fear of God. 
correcting your child is one of them teaching. Hey, I caught you! Now you're going to pay the price. Now sit down with me and let me explain to you what you did wrong and what you're going to get for what you're doing wrong. And what the relationship, what you did in the Bible says about it. Let's take the Bible out of the courtrooms. Yeah, all right. Why are they overfilling? No word. Let's take prayer in the Bible out of the schools and let's not teach them about God. Why are we having massacres in schools? Oh, uh, I wonder why. It amazes me to see old people dart out in the road without looking both ways. I don't care what the law says. The law won't protect you from a hospital bed. Even if you get a million dollars for someone that ran you over. It ain't going to stop the pain if you're lying underneath a car or if you died. My parents taught me properly. Look both ways, and when I did it, I was punished. It saved me a lot of pain and anguish. It was done because my parents love me and want me to stay alive. Fearing God keeps you alive. And it does not come natural Parents, your children are looking to you to teach them and to show them what the fear of God is. Be angry, mom and dad, but the Bible says sin not. Your parents, your children are watching you. Let not the wrath go upon uh, something like the sun going down. And dad's been sleeping on the couch for two days. Your children are watching you. You just said that that Bible verse doesn't mean nothing in the household. Why should I fear God if he's going to come, my husband's still on the couch, or my wife is still on the couch, or going away, and then the Lord come back and find you separated? If you don't punish your children, you're not teaching them to fear. Look around you. It's only going to get worse. Psalms 111 verse 10. This is a serious subject here that Mary's teaching us. Psalms 111 verse 10. Because if you don't get this, you're not going to serve God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I can't do the, the graduation little music there. You know, you get to, oh, I got my degree. I can go work for this big company. What about your degree in God? <coughs> Wisdom is how to apply what you know. I know that's not mine, so I should not touch it. I know that God wants me to do this. I should do it. I know the will of God. I know what God expects. I know what God doesn't want. And I'm going to fear if I do what he doesn't want me to do. I'm going to fear if I don't do what he wants me to do. And you won't get a piece of paper to hang on the wall. You'll get a crown. For all eternity. And when the 24 elders cast their crowns at the land, you can cast yours down with them saying, I feared and serve and love you. What are you going to do when it comes time to cast your crowns out and you ain't got none, idiot? Wisdom. What did Paul keep saying in his writing? I would not have you to be ignorant. 
Yes, I'm excited about this, because I want you to know this is an exciting kind of thing that you need to know, and it is not being preached, and it's not being taught. You need to know this. Your decree here will be a crown. Proverbs 1-7. We're going to go to a new book. Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What do you know? Take 75 churches as they come out the door asking what they know about God and the fear. What do you know about God's fear? What do you know what God expects from you? What do you know from God does not expect from you? You wouldn't know that from the churches that I have been in. I have been in a church where they were giving out raffle tickets or tickets to a, a beer bomb. You think the fear of God's in that place? Giving the Lord's Supper to uh, to some mentally retarded, and I say that respectfully, people that has no idea what the Lord and with the warning that gets. Now, listen, you're mentally retarded by birth or, or an accident. I feel for you, but when God gives a stern warning of what your life is to be before you take the Lord's Supper. Do you know about God and what he wants and what he doesn't want? And when you reach your hand into the cookie bag or jar, you are a thief. And what does the Bible say about a thief? Do you know? When you join a person that is someone else's spouse, do you know what the Bible says? Do you know that the holiday celebration you are having, the origins and the, and the foundational things that are pagan, and you still do it, you have no fear of God. Proverbs 1.29 For they, for that they hated knowledge, and did not choose to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord, get this, you ready for this one? Drum roll. It's a free will. You can say to God, God, I'm going to fear you. God, I'm not going to fear you. It's up to you. Proverbs 2 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. You need to understand. Haven't we seen the wisdom and the knowledge now understanding? One of those things Solomon lacked. One of those things. Satan lacked out of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And that's where their life fell. You need all three, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Without the three, you can't serve God. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. And understanding the Bible is your relationship of what you know and how to do and to God and for God. 8.13, Proverbs 8.13. This is the downfall of America, 8.13. Ready? The fear of the Lord, this is what you want, is to hate, ooh, that's not in the Bible, is it? Evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. Do you hate sin? 
your sin, any sin? Do you hate that our country's in pride that they won't allow God? Be ye angry, sin not. Does it make you angry? Hey, even Jesus got angry. Do you have a lost one that won't come to Christ and you hate the idea of whatever they're, they're relying on but Christ? Do you hate that? Do you hate the sin that you know a loved one is in? Did you sit around the Christmas table? Did you proclaim Jesus Christ? Did you fear God enough that I don't care what my family thinks? I'm going to tell them about my Savior. Or did you fear the people and their sins more? That you may not be invited to the next meal around the table. Proverbs 10.27 The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. It keeps you alive longer. Hey! Here comes a Greyhound bus. If you look both ways, you're going to be living a little longer. But if you just step out in the road. Hi, Jesus. What am I doing here? You were an idiot. You saw the bus coming. Well, I had the right of way. The law says I was in a... Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. You just go over there with the idiot section. In about five minutes, we were going to have the rapture. Okay? <laughs> were you not an idiot? By the time you crossed the road, you would have been called up with all the other Christians in the rapture. Serving God and fearing God and, and hating your sins will keep you alive longer. You know, God, if you get to the point in your Christian life, you may die earlier than God expects you to die because your sins and your living, you may be making such a mockery of Jesus Christ that i got to take you home just to get you out of that mess because you're giving me a bad name. Proverbs 14.26 And we're not looking at all. We should, but we... 1426. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. I feel at this one. I failed this other night. I, I felt the Lord led me to, to give a gospel track to a cashier, and I didn't do it. I guess I didn't fear God. Yes. I said, I guess I didn't fear God. Had I feared God, I gave him a gospel check. I didn't have the confidence in God. So I failed. I sinned. I sinned because I did not fear God. I feared man. And John says in, in, in 1 John that fear brings torment. But make you fear will make you do things or not make you do things that you should do. Terror. Ooh. That guy's gonna kill me with a bazooka because I'm gonna hit him a piece of paper. I, I should be ashamed of myself. And I am. 1427. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. You know, they came down to Florida looking for the fountain of life, and it's in the Bible. What is the fountain of life? Hey, let's get a plot of land down here in Florida. We'll say, the fountain of life, and they'll come up and put a little monument there that says Proverbs 14.27. Look it up yourself in the King James Bible. Charge them, charge them admission for that. Our Bible fountain of life monument. Ooh. Bring your church brochure and we'll give you five dollars off. I shouldn't have said that. Someone might do it. It's the fountain of life. Fifteen sixteen. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therewith. 
Little is much when the fear of God's in it. 16.6 By mercy, remember what Mary, and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Fear the Lord prevents sin. Not only do you have to fear the Lord, he hate sin. Fear the Lord will stop you from sinning. You don't want to sin no more. You don't want to be involved in that sin no more. Fear God. Wherever it is. How would you like to find the one that was abused and, 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 and bruised and bleeding and whipped and nailed to the cross, come back and find you doing what you're doing? Nineteen twenty three. Proverbs nineteen twenty three. See that's the fear. God catching us. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. It's life. Twenty two four. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. How about the Lord Jesus Christ stepping down off the judgment seat, placing a crown upon your head, and with his outstretched nail pierced hand saying, well, good, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Isn't that enough to fear him? Twenty three seventeen. You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. November, December, be a good boy or girl. He sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're awake. So that's Santa Claus. He's a pervert. I know it's Jesus Christ. So you better be good for goodness sake. That's Jesus Christ. But look at Proverbs 23, 17 as we close. Let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. How many times did I tell you there was fear of the Lord? 30 times. You know how many days there are on a Jewish calendar? 30. All day long. All month long. How you like that? On our Gentile Roman calendar, it gives us one extra day not to fear God and do whatever we want. How you like that one? But the Jewish calendar and Proverbs twenty three seventeen. What am I to fear God? All day long. Wrong. Back to Luke chapter 1. And his mercy is on them that fear him. Now the fear of the Lord will pass from generation to generation. You know where the sin lies in this? There's a generation that fears a church organization. That grandma and grandpa and mom and dad went. And I'm not sure about Aunt Sue. If, if you know, I gotta pay a certain amount of money and candles and stuff like that. And if I ever leave that church, see if you fear the church, then you're subject to the church. And if you don't know what, what, what I'm talking about, you have not witnessed to a Roman Catholic and their tradition and their family. And their generations, and their generations, and their generations of being Catholic. And Mary's not talking about Catholic. She's talking about them that fear God. There are some out there that fear a church. 
won the glorification and honor and, and, and eternal life, won the damnation and condemnation. And I say that because this woman we're talking about, Mary, she's the center of the worship of that church. You gotta be careful what you read and do. Fear the Lord is something very not needful a must. It must. <laughs>